You're the Lord of all creation, the risen Lamb of God, the highly exalted Savior of the earth, the one who loved and saved us and brought us back to God. So we lift our hands in victory to see. Oh, oh, you alone are worthy. You alone are able. You alone are Savior of the earth. Oh. So able, able, so able, able, so able, 
able, so able, able, so able, able, so able, able, so able, Lord of all, 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 Lord of all. So able, able, so able, able, so able, able, so able, able, so able, Lord of all, Lord of all, Lord of all, Lord of all. Hallelujah, singing praises, Lord of all. Hallelujah, singing praises, Lord of all. Hallelujah, singing praises, Lord of all. Just join me in Washington. Hallelujah, singing praises.
cara hoje Oh, cara hoje
break every chain, break every chain, to 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 break every chain, yes, Lord, to break every chain, there is power in your name. To break every chain, King of glory, Lord of majesty, in your name, yokes are destroyed, in your name, fetters are broken, in your name, strongholds are moved, in your name, principalities are displaced. In your name, men and women arise oh, from the dung hill, O oh God. In your name, yokes are broken. In your name, feathers are broken. Lord, you deliver us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of your love. In your name, we find liberty from every, every oppression in our lives. In your name we can see you, O oh God. In your name we are redeemed from the worthless things of this world. In your name we who were afar off are brought near. In your name we who were not known are known. In your name we who are nobodies have become the sons of God. In your name we stand tall. In your name we stand in your name. In your name we stand before you, God. Not guilty, but by the blood of Jesus. We are acquitted in your presence. Not because of what we have done, but because of your loving kindness. Because of your mercy and your grace. Because of your favor to us, O oh God. And while we were still seen as Mukama, you sent your son to come and to die for us. You alone deserves O oh glory. You alone deserves O oh praise. You alone deserves O oh Lord. Be magnified tonight. Be exalted tonight, O oh God. A contemplation of Asaph in Psalm 78. Bible says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. And I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children telling them to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done for he established a testimony in Jacob or Israel and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. The testimony of God that the generation to come might know them and that the children who would be born that they may arise and declare them to their children. Why? That they may set their hope in God. That they may put their trust in God. That they may wait on God and God alone. That they may set their hope in God. And not forget the works of God. But to keep his commandments. And may not be like their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation, Bible says. A generation that did not set its heart aright. And whose spirit was not faithful to God. Father, we pray today that you will help us as a generation. That we will be a generation that will set our hearts aright. 
that we will be a generation that is faithful to you, Abba Father. Lord, that our hearts will be circumcised, not by the hands of flesh, but that by the Spirit on the inside. Lord, that you will break away all forms of rebellion. Lord, that you will break away all forms of rebellion. Lord, that you will break into our hearts, O oh God. Lord, that you will melt us on the inside. Master, that you will remold us after truth. Lord, that you will remold us after righteousness. Lord, that you will remold us after your heart. Remold us after you, Mukama. Take us to the potter's wheel tonight. Let your spirit begin to remold our hearts. Remove the heart of stone. Remove the hard-hearted heart, oh God. Remove the heart of rebellion. Remove our bending towards iniquity. Remove our turning towards iniquity. Break through our hearts, King of glory, that our spirit will be faithful to you. Lord, that we will hear you and we will obey. Lord, that we will desire your word more than anything. Lord, that it will be milk unto us. Bible says, Lord, that we will desire it like milk. Oh, King of glory, Lord of majesty, let your word be like honey upon our lips, oh God. Let it melt our hearts. Cause our inner being to be sold out to you. To be faithful to you, oh God. That we will not be like the children of Ephraim. Who being armed and carrying bows. Turned back in the day of battle. And they did not keep the covenant of the Lord. They refused to walk in his law. And forget, forgot his works. And his wonders that he has shown. Lord, that we will not turn back, King of glory. You said he who sets his hand on the hope and turns back is not worthy of the kingdom. King of glory, you know how far you have brought us. Lord, you know the things that are in our hearts. Lord, you know the fears, Mukama. Lord, you know the troubles, mighty God. My God, my God, I pray. That you will cause us to be a faithful people. No matter what, King of glory. That we will move forward and not turn back. That we will set our face against the enemy like flint. And say, come what may. This work has to be done. God has commissioned us. We have no option. King of glory. Cause us to remember your works. In the midst of our years. Cause us to remember your works. Marvelous things you did in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt and in the land of Zoan. When you divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made water stand up like a heap. In the daytime you led them by the cloud. And in the night time like a, with the light of fire. Lord, you have healed us, King of glory. Lord, you have dispersed our big enemies. Lord, you broke through poverty when it surrounded us. Lord, you broke through sickness when it surrounded us. Lord, you helped us when we were born and helpless. You have brought us this far. In the daytime, you led them by the cloud. And all night with the light of fire. Lord, you split the rocks in the wilderness. You gave them a drink in abundance like the depths. You also brought out streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Oh, but they sinned even the more against you, O oh God, by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. And they said, really can God prepare a table in the wilderness? King of glory, we pray that you will cause us to turn away from our backsliding. That you cause us to turn away from our iniquity. 
that you cause us to turn back to you, Mukama. Oh. For when you struck the rock, you caused waters to come out. Oh, yes. Streams flowed in the desert. Oh, and they asked for bread. And they said, can he provide meat for his people? They did not know that the bread of life was there. They did not know that the rock of ages was there. They did not know that the lion of Judah was there. They did not know that the balm of Gilead was there. The Lord that sustains them, O oh God. Therefore you were furious with them. And fire broke out and consumed them. Even the anger of the Lord came against Israel. Because they did not believe in God and trust in your salvation. Yet you commanded the clouds above. And opened the doors of the heavens. And rained down manna on them to eat. Gave them bread of heaven. Men ate angels food. You also sent them food to the field. King of glory, Lord of majesty, mighty Jehovah, great I am. Open our eyes to see your mighty works. Open our eyes to see your great works that we will not turn away from you. That we will not walk after our own ways. That we will not abandon the work of the Lord. And look elsewhere, Mukama. Calls us to see you clearly. Let us behold you as in a glass. Let us know you for ourselves. Let us hear you with our hearts. Let us turn away from our wicked ways. Cause us to be broken before you. Cause us to be humble before you, God. Cause us to be broken, King of glory. From the smallest to the greatest. That we may know that you are the Lord. That we may know that there is none other like you. That we may know that you reign over all. That we may know that you reign in power and glory. That we may know that you have all authority. Authority over the mountains and the hills. That you have authority in heaven and above and on earth beneath. Even under the earth, Lord. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That Christ is Lord. Lord, we bless Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Be magnified, O Lord. Be exalted, O God. Be magnified. Precious Holy Spirit, we welcome you. This is your house. This is your home. Come and take church. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, bless the Lord. Bible says, bless the Lord at all times. Forget not his benefits. Who heals us of all our sicknesses. Heal and delivers us from all our iniquities. We want to thank God today. Hallelujah. Somehow I've just not been feeling well. But I'm glad that this month is progressing the way it is. I'm glad that the Lord has brought us this far. And there are great testimonies coming. I've already had testimonies from people. But there are greater testimonies that are coming. And I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful to God. I'm so thankful to God for our family. I'm so thankful to God for our ministry. I'm so thankful to God for our people. I'm so thankful to God for the families of our church. I'm so thankful to God for the body of Christ. 
I'm so thankful to God for the church of Christ in Uganda and in Africa. I'm so thankful for the church global. I'm so thankful that, you know, this season we're realizing that it's not just about our church. It's about the body of Christ. I'm so thankful for the leaders of our city, for the leaders of our nation, for the leaders that God has raised for such a time as this. I'm truly, truly, truly grateful. And I know that God is continuing to work. And we're going to continue to see great things. In the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Michael Chintu. I'm a pastor here at House of Revival in Kampala. And so I'll request that if you're watching us on Facebook, please go and like our page. And let us connect. The kingdom needs a connected people. The kingdom of God needs a connected people. We are all gifted differently. And when we come together, the church of God stands. And if you're on YouTube, please go and like our page. And then you will know when all these teachings are coming on. Amen. Today, we, I want to just briefly talk about diligence. Something that God has just been challenging me about. I'm learning. I have my scriptures that I'm using to learn. I'm just going to share a few with you. I have scriptures in the Bible that I'm learning about diligence. And there are things I am seeing now and I wish I knew about three years ago or I had taken them serious. I wish I had taken these things serious. So if you're hearing about some of this stuff for the first time, you are blessed. And your day can begin now. Your year can, your decade. This is a decade, 2020 to 2030. We're going to knock it and throw it off there. And so we have to go back to the word and do it God's way. The word diligence means to, it, it means careful and persistent work or effort. Careful or calculated and persistent work or effort. The word effort actually means excellence. Excellence is all about effort. How much effort are you willing to put in? How much zeal are you willing to load? How much commitment are you putting? So careful or persistent. Can you see how it's related to prayer? Because prayer is about being careful. And it's about persisting. And prayer is effort. It's big time effort. The scripture says in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel chapter 6. The book of Daniel chapter 6. Verse 1. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would not suffer loss. Everywhere we see diligence, they will be loss that is being averted. Or rather, they will be gain. That is it. Whether it is in prayer, whether it is in relationships, whether it is in work. You know, when I began to work, I didn't even understand why I was coming to the workplace. I didn't have a strategy for that workplace. I didn't know how I could add value to my workplace. I began in a, a, small com a smaller company then called uh, Rank Consult. And they were training, they had IT training solutions. <laughs> and I went there and I used to train for about... I think about three years. But I had no strategy for growing that company. 
I didn't know what I should focus on with everything within me. And I had ability. I had great ability. But I wasted time in that company. I truly wasted a lot of time in that company. And I moved on. I went and worked in World Vision 2003 to 2010. And you know, I still just sat in and waited for my bosses to give me work. And I was in a, a creative department. So I could have been very, very creative. It's true, I taught myself so many things. But there was just so much more I could do. I learned how to be diligent with prayer in World Vision. I learned commitment in that place. But as a young man, I used to watch football till late. I didn't have to. I don't remember what players I watched. I don't remember the scores. I, I mean, the best I could get out of it was, was a, a, a heartbreak from, from a club called Arsenal. It's supposed to be a club that is shooting down the stars. It was shooting down our hearts. Anyway, all, all, all Arsenal fans, I salute you. And so, I, I just didn't understand what it means. So I just believe that what I know now, God is going to use what I know now and, and recover back the years. But everywhere you see loss, loss, diligence is missing. That's it. Diligence is missing. So the king gave them charge so that he might not suffer loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps. Can you imagine that these were the cream de la cream of Babylon? Babylon was the America of today. Not just America, maybe the California of today or the New York of today. It was the economy within the economy. It was the place to be. And this man of God distinguished himself. I wish I'd found out the meaning of the word distinguished. Set himself above by standard. By availability, by execution, by timeliness, by consistence, by persistence, by finishing work, by going the extra mile. You know, some people don't even believe that these are spiritual things we're talking about. You know, in Uganda, you just need to come early and you leave everyone behind. There are three things I know in Uganda. If, if you come early, if you read or study, and if you do what you've been assigned to do and finish. The word is finish. If you keep time in your ground, not even keeping time, if you come in time always, if you study, and if you do what you have been assigned to do and finish it, you'll just be ahead of the park. This guy, I've, I've tested that at a, even at a company level. Sometimes, sometimes I think we think that to come late means you're the boss. He distinguished himself above the best. And that spiritual warfare at its max. Do you remember when Moses went into Pharaoh's house? The guys tried to match. And, and, and Moses' stick turned into a serpent and swallowed the others. Ideally, God wants you not only to compete, but to swallow your competition. Oh God, I pray that you will help us to understand these things and to grab them. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting over the whole realm. 
because of an excellent spirit. They didn't say because Daniel was a very good writer. They didn't say because Daniel was a very good dancer. Which means you may not have all those skills that people have. Can you imagine? And then you set yourself to be excellent by the spirit of God. And the king says, you know what? And those kings represent God in the Old Testament. That means that God is looking for men and women that will be excellent. And he will set them high above over the realm. Men who understand stewardship. Men who understand multiplication. Men who understand the power and privilege of time. God says, I will set you over the whole realm. What realm do you want? It's the other way to ask yourself is, what realm do you want God to set you over? You have to distinguish yourself above the satraps of that realm. What realm do you want? Is it a realm of music? You have to distinguish yourself above the leaders of that realm by the Spirit of God. So the governors and satraps fought, sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault. Can you imagine? Does he come late for meetings? No. Does he backbite? No. Does he dodge work? No. In fact, he does more. Does he help others? Yes. Does he support the church? Yes. Is he running his race? Yes. Think about it. Because he was faithful, nor was there any error of fault found in him. Is it possible that a man or woman can live his life on earth and there is no error or fault that men can charge against you? The answer is yes. Unfortunately, yes. And this is where the battle has to start. The Bible says, I'll read you a few scriptures because our time is gone. In James chapter 1 verse 12. James chapter 1 verse 12. It says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive a crown of life, which he has which God has promised to those who love him, who is persistent, who puts in effort, who stands his ground. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, whatever your hand finds to do, consistence or persistence, do it with all of your might. Does that apply to your prayer life? Does that apply to your work? My dear, that's what revival means. It means that if, if someone assigned me work, they can go and sleep. Can you imagine that you get to such a level? If they assigned me work, they can go and sleep. I am going to execute it and finish it. Imagine if God knew that there is a scarcity of housing in Uganda. And he assigns you housing. And every house you build, you build, you finish, you beautify, you put flowers, you put, you know, everything and you release it. Unfortunately, this is what the, the, the ethics, the Japanese are doing. They are doing their work so well and finishing it. That God decides to cause them to be stewards over us. Because the Bible says when you're still a baby, you need stewards. And so God will use Japanese to steward his own people. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 and 8 says, Go to the ant, O sluggard, 
consider her ways and be wise without having any chief officer or ruler she prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest she has no leader we have been told by many people i think john maxwell says that that self-leadership is the highest form of leadership in the american army they teach people that if you're going to win that in a particular day start by getting up and making your bed it's one victory upon another upon another and so you need to first pull back and say what am i doing you'd rather do few things and do them so well than try and do everything and not do much you need to look at your days and say what do i get out of my day what's the value that i can milk every day is like a, a cow that god gives us to milk you can milk it and come out with nothing you know these principles come from the prayer into our lives and they come from our lives into our prayer life hallelujah i like proverbs 12 verse 27 which says that whoever is slothful will not roast his gain <coughs> will not go the extra mile will not prepare their food will not harvest the crop that they've sown but the diligent man will get precious wealth i'll share others tomorrow but i like second peter 1 5 to 7 second peter chapter 1 5 to 7 it says, for this very reason, make every effort, effort is there, to supplement your faith with virtue or love. And with virtue, add knowledge. And with knowledge, add self-control. I wish every young man could read this scripture. <coughs> With knowledge, add self-control. With self-control, add steadfastness. With steadfastness, add godliness. With godliness, add brotherly affection. And with brotherly affection, add love. Every attribute that is made here is an attribute that calls for persistence, that calls for effort. You cannot remain ignorant if you are continually seeking after knowledge and studying you cannot you cannot lack virtue if you are going after it you cannot lack self-control if you're putting effort in saying i'll cut this i will not have this these apps on my phone i will not watch these movies I will not hang around these people. I will not look at that. It's effort. It's persistence. Steadfastness. It means that your yes is a yes. Your no is a no. If you pursue a goal, you stay at it and stay at it until you break through. You know, I desire to learn piano. First, I, I wanted to learn guitar and it became just too complicated. And I desire to learn piano. And in my journey, I'm at that point which is the most, most frustrating. Where you, you can't get to clinch it. And it's very easy to give up. But life is generally like that. The breakthrough comes after the, the mountain of frustration, after the plateau of frustration. If you have not reached a point of frustration, you've not yet graduated for, for, you've not yet qualified for breakthrough. At that place of frustration is where your flesh gives up, but your heart takes a hold of the promise of God. 
And when your heart comes out of your flesh and stands independent and puts its foot down, you're not taking me back. You're not holding me in useless things. I'm not falling back on this journey. I have believed God. I am going to believe all the way. I have looked to Jesus. I'm going to look to him all the way. I decided to accept him and to walk this journey. I am not turning back. That's when your flesh gives up and begins to follow your heart or your spirit. And then you begin to see a breakthrough because now your soul is willing. Your flesh may not understand, but it's willing. It has been subjected. It has been submitted to the leading of the Spirit of God. That's when the Bible says that the word of the Lord is the candle. It's the one that lights my path. Once the heart says, let's wait on God, the soul submits, the flesh submits. Once the heart says, we are going to seek God. Once our heart, the Bible says one of the kings in the Old Testament that he failed or he sinned because he did not set his heart <coughs> to seek after God. It means that diligence is an issue of the heart. And we'll deal with that. Father, we honor you and bless you. King of glory, I pray that you break through our hearts even tonight. That you will break through our hearts, O oh God. That you break through our hearts, O oh God. That you break through our hearts, King of glory. That you break through our hearts, oh God. Open our eyes to see the virtues of diligence, persistent, hard work, effort, Lord. That we will become that which you want us to become. That we will be like Daniel. Lord, that we will distinguish ourselves above average. Come on, just go, go ahead and go ahead and pray. Master, help us. Lord, we desire. Stands all 
power of your name, your mighty love stands strong to the end. You will fulfill your purpose in me. You won't forsake. You will be with me. Here I am, God. Arms wide open. Graceful. 